Tim, Dr. Vivian Timothy from Nigeria, Africa. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, <laughs> okay, that's what was that uh, cool. And um, I'm coming all the way from Augsburg, south of Germany. So very far away. Hey, you, you to somewhere? <laughs> Bobby, come on, you're living behind the backyard. Yeah, <laughs> Connie's room. Oh wow. Yeah, cool. Okay, cool. I am here. I'm um, Vivian. Dr. Timothy is uh, one of those victims, victims of uh, um, academic stereotype family, where everybody has to be a doctor, a lawyer. And Vivian Timothy wanted to be an artist, but that was never an option for my family. But I count myself as a success story. Success story here in Germany. Success story of an African woman here in Germany, yes. Because, yeah. because Germany gave me the opportunity to resurrect the talent that was buried years, like 30 years, 40 years back, which I never knew was there anymore. But uh, without me being here in Germany and the freedom we have here, I don't think I would have resurrected this. So it's a success story. Cool. And um, what Vivian is trying to do today, I'm going to take us on a journey. I've, I've come here to share. I'm an artist, so I don't do this uh, PowerPoint uh, lesson. I don't do that. I do it my artistic way. Cool. And uh, what I'm trying to do today is take us on a journey, a journey to our past. Because history, when we understand our history, we can understand our present that will enable us to maybe plan our future. So I'm taking us on a, on a journey to the past, to our story. And the journey from the past, we are coming to the present. And from there, we move forward to the future, to the Afro hopeful, to a hopeful Afrofuturism. Maybe? Exactly. So it is high time we tell our own story. Um, I think we are sick and tired of hearing our story from other continental historians. I think it's hard time that we Africans tell our story. So, I start with this. My theme is uh, repositioning Africa through art, culture, and literature. So, I'm just sharing. So, it is known in history for thousands of years before modern civilization. Why I'm reading all this because I might forget a lot of points, and these are good points I want to make here, which is very important for me. Um, it is known in history for thousands of years before modern civilization that Africa had played a major, if not a pioneer role, in setting the precedence of, of, uh, for literature, culture, arts, and of many cultures and ways of life of numerous nations of the world. Derivatively referred to the dark continent. Or maybe due to the dark skinned <laughs> Aboriginal inhabitants of the continent. Africa remained undoubtedly the cradle of civilization. If we like it or not. Yeah. As early as 10... A little bit of history now, so please, sorry, I'm going to talk, go back to history, please. Don't get bored, I like history. As early as 10,000 BC, there has been settlements of evidence of civilized activities around the lower Mesopotamia. This is the Egypt of today. These settlements engaged in poultry activities and other forms of irrigated agricultural, agricultural practices animal husbandry and organized social system. Where I'm coming to is this question of civilization. And the Africans, they are not civilized. They, are, they were never civilized. It was when the Europeans came out, we now became civilized. No, we had our own civilization going on before they came. Cool. That's where, where I'm going, I'm coming back. The dark concept, this dark, Dark concept 
caused modern historians from other parts of the world to subdue and subfuse the originality of African continent as the cradle of civilization, irrespective of incontrovertible evidences pointing to this fact. There were very early forms of uh, uniform uni writing and proto-writers found in the early Mesopotamia culture and peoples. And where I come from, I think uh, the eastern part of Nigeria to I think some part of uh, Cameroon, we had this writing before, it's called NCDB, NCDB writings. So these were the writings that our forefathers used to communicate. So we, they were not illiterate, but it was like uh, figures, like they're using figures to communicate with each other. The villages, the chief, uh, the chief, the chief. Maybe if he wants to send the maybe whatever, I don't know. They they write this uh, in CDB on a sometimes they carve it on on a on a on a, on a, on a piece of wood or on a stone, and this is the writings that our forefathers were using to communicate with each other. So they were not illiterate. And um, the ancient, sorry, the ancient Alexandria with its pot had served as a veritable point of gathering, as a melting point of knowledge, even for a nation like Greece, reputable to be the cradle of Western civilization, which evolved 15, 1500 to 2000 BC. <clears throat> Lower Mesopotamia, Egypt in Africa can be said to be the first civilization. And there is no evidence to prove that civilization evolved at the same time in both Western and uh, in both Eastern and Western Hemisphere. There was no evidence. Civilization does not necessarily mean being able to understand and speak other people's language or follow the trend of the developmental indices or the concept of development, but the ability to organize and structure the society. In this case, the peoples of African continents structuring themselves into hegemonious and homogeneous social, cultural, political, economic patterns, acceptable and agreeable to the rest of the participating members of the society. I think this is civilization. The fact still remains that, no matter how much the concept of first and early civilization is denied of the African descent, there still remains many incontrovertible evidences of the, the continent's pioneer, pioneer, the continent's pioneer role in human existence and civilization. I like this. So the example, the example of the Ko and the Sun tribe of the Kalahari, Kalahari uh, South African people who were reputed to have lived between 6,000 to 9,000 years ago with their distinct Y chromosomes. Uh, y chromosome, that is distinct, uh, distinct Y Adamic chromosomes are clear indications of Africa's leading role in human existence and civilization. The concept of cradle of civilization has been subject of so much debate. Figuratively speaking, cradle, what is cradle? Cradle means the place or region where everything is nurtured or sheltered at its early stage. So Africa, is actually the, the cradle of civilization. The concept is traced by the Oxford English to Spencer in the year 1590, and Charles Rowling's ancient history in the year 1734 states that Egypt, Egypt served as the first cradle of the holy nation. Sorry, without being religious here, but I have to go a little bit into Bible because um, if the scientists could come one day and say, hey, the world 
came about um, some hundred thousand years ago with a big bang. I can as well trust the Bible because they can't prove it, but at least people are still telling the story of the Bible to today. So let me go a little bit into Bible. Please forgive me. And without sounding religious, Bible scriptures narrates in Genesis chapter 12, verse 10 to 12, how Abraham, the father of all nations, went down to Egypt in Africa when there was a universal famine or recession at that time. This Abraham we're talking about here lived like 5,000 to 4,000 BC ago. Yet, get this, he met in the land of Egypt a well-organized, civilized social, social uh, society with domesticated animal husbandry. A people with a clear moral sense of justice and not a barbaric and illiterate Africans. A society that had this is sorry, a society that had this early stage of excellent, excellent homo sapien environment can surely be said to be the first civilization, despite the distortion of history by other continental historians. I have taken liberty to dwell on this issue of early civilization because of the imbalances existing in the global society that runs mainly on racial color lines. These imbalances have so much weight on the African person. This borders on cultural, literary, artistic, economic, political, and social misinterpretations and deliberate misinformation with a view of continuing a long and an age-long concept of inferiority complex branded in the African dark continent. So mention must be made of the early sea voyages. I'm coming somewhere. I'll get there soon. Mention was made of the early sea voyages and many exploration of uh, expeditions carried out by various people of the European and American continent. The numerous wealth in many forms carried off from Africa formed the strong basis of wealth and prosperity in the nations involved. Many quays and railways were hurriedly constructed in various African nations for the sole purpose of cutting away the stupendous wealth inherent in the African continent. And it is still going on till today. Artworks of various qualities and materials holding a deep cultural and historical values we are taking away and kept in various museums here. And it hurts me so much. There was a place I went for an exhibition. So this lady, I did an exhibition with this lady. She, uh, she collects art, artifacts from Africa. And uh, I came there with my painting. And she has this room, this hall, full of African artifacts. And I can see some of these artifacts are from, from my villages. And when I get, when we go to Africa, and you go to museums, you see nothing. Like you said, early. Who said that? Who said like um, they're building, they have a, this uh, uh, museum, but there, there's something in it. So, and it hurts me. It, it, it breaks my heart, you know, because this is what we need in our muse in museums in Africa, but we don't have them anymore. And these are things you cannot just reproduce. It's, it's because the spirit that was, that they had in creating this artifact, you can't just do it like, it doesn't work like that. So it hurts me. And um, exactly. Um, yeah. Artworks of very um, qualities, various qualities and materials holding deep cultural and historical values were taken away and kept in, in various museums of the world. And these artworks of African origin have contributed immensely in creating a new vision, ideas, and influence on the contemporary artists of the rest of the world. Almost, if not all the nations of Africa, is a repository of some form of very ancient artifacts 
or the others, beaming lights on the path of ancient history of man's early civilized existence. For example, now I'll get, I'll, I'll get back to that, sorry. Art and its works had always been at the heart of every African person. The history of Africa has, has always been written in art because it is the best form of implanting and expressing the deep values that are inherent in the African continent. The museums and art galleries in modern day Egypt has a lot to tell from the wonders of symmetric excellence of the pyramid structures to the incomparable scientific excellence of the mummified bodies of the pharaohs. From the ancient wall caverns of modern day helicopters and spaceships to the perfect representation of modern day submarines carved on the wall of the Egyptian, uh, in the uh, okay, in, in museums of uh, okay, Egypt. And, and this we are done like thousands of years back. And we're talking about civilization here. And uh, modern day submarine vessels painted several thousands of years ago. So, the injustice, exploitations, and imperialistic systematic neo colonialism of the 18th and 19th century of Africa led to the balkanization of the continent by Europe and the West. This art found Russians, Germans, Dutch, the English and other European countries forcing themselves into, into the lives of South Africans and other African countries. Majority of the choicest land areas in South Africa are forcefully uh, force themselves into the majority of sorry, um, force themselves into the majority of the choicest land areas in South Africa and forcefully created appetite structure that lasted many decades until it was dismantled in early 1990s. The French colonized countries like Côte d'Ivoire, Togo, Benin Republic, some parts of Cameroon and other African countries. The Africans took over Liberia. And other nations like Africa, Africa, um, and, and other nations of Africa. Germans are in Namibia, Namibia, sorry, the British, Zimbabwe, Swaziland, and other countries, and Nigeria, of course. Need I continue? I believe everyone in this hall has an idea of where the white race has colonized, exploited, and controlled their economies, and are still controlling in African nations. It was during this period that the imbalances were structured into places with the concept of, of participating colonialist and active connivance of the United Nations and a willing electronic and print media over and um, ever ready to propagate and disseminate this monumental fallacy and injustice bordering on the racial color line. But before I continue, go to the hopeful, our hopeful Afrofuturism. I want to read you a prose I wrote on Mama Africa. Um, this prose is about my, is, uh, my discontent, my, my disappointment, my, yeah, I'm so sad about what's going on, my pain, my pain uh, about what's going on in Africa. So I use this prose to express my love and my pain for what is going on in Africa. I call this prose Mama Africa. It goes like this. My land, my hope, my pride, Mama Africa. Each time I try to wrap my arms around you, you seem to be far away from me. Instead, you have politically, religiously, economically prostituted yourself to the world, Mama Africa. 
you made you made yourself commercially attractive to the laws of the kings of exploitation in Africa. You let them deceive you with their sweet words. You won't be hurt, they say. Your waywardness has talked to you in a system that sucks your blood, Mama Africa. Mother nature endured you with everything. A straight way to heaven, but your numerous men paved a diamond road to the gates of hell, Mama Africa. You sold yourself for what? The diamonds meant for your beauty has turned into blood diamonds. The good oil from your veins has turned out to be the oil of doom, Mama Africa. How naive. Your rivers are in their hands. You, you, they made you sell and buy your resources. And you exchange your treasures for what? For guns? To protect yourself from yourself? How funny you still believe they won't hurt you, Mama Africa. Oh, Mama Africa, your soil that was once warm and soothing turned into a volcanic landscape. Your land, your air, your sea, even your mountains, all are screaming, run if you can. Your children are leaving you and dying on their journey to their so-called paradise in the quest for a better tomorrow. And a few survivors are treated like a bowler, spat on, scorned, burnt, even isolated. Oh, Mama Africa, your children are leaving you and dying in their, in a, and leaving you in such, in such of identity in their so-called paradise. Wake up, Mama Africa. Your years of exploitation have made you old and weak. Wake up from your slumber, Mama Africa. You have been kept in coma for a long time. Your borrowed system, Mama Africa, has failed you. Stop the blame game. Accept the truth about you, Mama Africa. This counterfeit system, this system is rather illusion than freedom. Oh, Mama Africa, the values you taught me, are they still worth fighting for? Is there any hope for tomorrow? Are all our hopes gone and lost forever? I'm still continuing. <laughs> so, let's go to the, maybe, a hopeful future for us. What, what can we do? So, to address these imbalances, it behoves on every African to be proud and nationalistic. Despite the age-long monumental exploitation of the continent, she still remains, we still remain, Africa still remains the hope of the nations because we still have much untapped potentials. Our sons and daughters, both are at home and in the diaspora must endeavor to invest their resources and ideas in the continent. Thank you, brother, you're doing it already. Well done. Exactly. And um, they must be focused towards making the desired changes, technologically and industri industri industrially, because it is when we are able to produce our needs and consume them within the continent that the need for importation of some goods will drop and reduce the continent's dependence. The quality standard must meet the international standards. Our economic analysts must fearlessly attack the huge differences in trade volumes with the continent's European trading partners citing injustice of long-term imbalances, bordering on color lines. Write up conferences, workshops like this must be constantly held with accurate statistics of the trade imbalances existing at the detriment of the African continent. Our art, artworks are the most sought after in the world because 
because of the appetizing energy in the message of our artworks. There are a lot of informations yet unannounced, latently buried in the, in the artistic bowl of the African continent. There is a great yearning for our art expression because the story of Africa, it's, it's yet to be told from the voice and works of African artists. Europe and the rest of the world are saturated with works based on the same and similar cultures. But unique messages in diverse and colorful cultures are yet to be unveiled in Africa. The concept of cultural expressions derived by the European artists from the numerous paintings and works of art stolen from the shores of Africa during the, during the colonial artifacts looting era have all evaporated. Hence, a strong need to use art and its work to portray the true face and values of the African continent. So what I'm doing today, like uh, when you go out, you saw my paintings, they're all hung there. But especially this very one, this very one I brought here, this is my interpretation of the future African man and woman. The future, the present future African man or woman, she's, she loves her, she's keeping her, her, her kinky hair. We don't want to use chemical to destroy our hair anymore because we have realized that all those we are lies because we believe that when you have straight hair, then you're pretty. When you are white, then when you are white skinned or, or, or light skinned, then you're pretty. But these are all what the colonial, sorry, the colonial master, that was what they gave us, that was what they made us believe. And we felt that to be a black is not good enough. To have your kinky hair, curly hair is not good enough. But now there's a turnaround. The African man, we don't want to, we are no more crazy about wearing suits to work, you know. Now, the African person has realized that we can use our fabric, African fabrics, to, to, to design beautiful, uh, beautiful suits. What we call it now kaftan. The men are wearing more of kaftan. And the, the women, they're keeping their kinky hair. And they're wearing their African design, like what I'm wearing here. It's all good. Everything is perfect. I love that. But then, let, let us not forget the real African man. He's a warrior. The real African woman. She's a warrior. These are the new African, the, the future Africa, the, 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 real Af the, the present African man and woman, they've started asking questions. They are no more satisfied with the history that we were taught. They are no more satisfied with the way things are going, you know. So now, then my, my advice to our, the, the, the African man and woman is, as much as we are enjoying our, our hair, wearing our modern African designs, let us not forget that the real African that is inside of us, that is the warrior, the African man that said, okay, I, I have to protect my boundary. Something is going wrong, wrong in my country, my continent. We have to do something about that. So this is my, my interpretation of the new, of the future African man and woman. And, um, sorry. Okay, I'll talk with that later. So, the importance of literature, art and culture, which are inter intertwined and are veritable, veritable vehicle to convey the way and life of a people to other world cannot be overemphasized. Over Hence, the strong need for the continent's art, culture, literature, giant civilization devoid, devoid of any form of inequalities and imbalances that are detected by color lines. Coming back to these two paintings, 
um, I call it the rebirth of the African warrior. Because the early African cosmology, the total concept of African man was that of a warrior. From early youthful age to the adolescent age, a young Africans, both male and female, are initiated into the fold of warrior through hollowing and rigorous training exercises. Any ad adolescent, that is where I come from, though, that's how it is. Any adolescent that fails to complete or endure the strenuous and extremely tasking ordeals of their initiation process. He is branded as godless, failure, and he and his generations will never be recognized in the society, ever. So thus, the spirit of patriotism and the sense of national defensive consciousness is imbued in every African, Africa, African through his generation. Hence, the unrelenting dynamic energy of Africanism is never lost on the African person, even as a slave laboring under the hot sun in white plantations in foreign countries, foreign lands too. Although this close, although very close to nature, Africa had always had rich <coughs> clothing culture. As an early civilization, we have we had always worn the warrior personality, even in conventional clothing attire. Time was when the corporate attires, attiring in the offices was shared suits and ties. Now, the African warrior is emerging. In specific, specifically fitted corporate clothing made of complete African textile materials like Ankara, like batik. Kente, Ghana prints, and numerous other African materials. But one thing is certain, despite this external coverage, you, sh we, uh, you, sh uh, you will still see the unquenchable spirit of the African warrior surging forward to defend and uh, define his heritage. So, that is what I'm trying to explain with these paintings. And then the Mama Africa, I, I called her, I see her as a prostitute, sorry to use this word, because that's what I see her to be. And uh, I don't know whether she's feeling so sad because the children are leaving her, or she's trying to say, okay, I've made a mistake. What can I do to make sure that my, my kids starts coming back to me? So, um, this is a mother that had stopped, that has, um, she disappointed her children. And I hope, I hope there's a way, a way out again in bringing her children back to her continent, back to her. So this is what this is all about. And the face here you're seeing, this is, I call it the, the tears of the innocence. This stands for both men and women that are everywhere, I don't know where they are, maybe in, in Africa or maybe in, in Libya or here in Europe, and they are crying, hoping to go back to their, to go back to Africa to meet Africa the way it should be. You see, the longer I'm staying here in Germany, in Europe, the more I long for, you know, going back home, like the way things are functioning here, the more I see that something is wrong in Africa, I think maybe when I, when, I, when I should be in Africa, I wouldn't really see the difference because I'm there. But being here in Europe, I know that this world is functioning here. Can I swear functioning in Nigeria? So something is wrong. So these tears is the tears of uh, mother. When can I go back to, I mean, to Africa? When can I get back home? So this is the tears of innocence, tears of African children trying to get back to their, their, their continent. So, and I have all the paintings out there. I mean, you can go and then look at them. So if you have, if you have any questions, you can always call, call, come to me and I'll explain you the paintings. But I'm going to leave you on this lighter mood. It's a story after all these heavy stories and exactly. 
It's a story of uh, Queen Nzinga of Ang Angola. I don't know whether any of you know her. Queen Nzinga? Cool. She's a warrior. Like this one here. So Queen Nzinga of Angola led a massive 30 years military slave revolution against the oppressive Portuguese uh, co co colonists that enslaved her people. And miraculously, she won. And she was a far greater underdog than the Americans were against the British. And you know what she did as a reward? And as a reward, she kept a personal harem of 60 able-bodied men all by herself. So there's always a reward in being a warrior. <laughs>